The following lesson is linked to learning outcome four, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to use structurally sound sentences in a meaningful and functional manner. Learners should be able to use correct word order in sentences with growing accuracy and explain how word order can influence meaning. Hello, I'm Nicola Shongwe and welcome to this lesson extension. So far, we've looked at how placing the main clause in different parts of the sentence adds variety. What we're going to do now is look at how placing words in different parts of the sentence can alter meaning. To show you what I mean, we're going to look at several sentences. Each one is exactly the same except for the placement of the word only. Let's have a look at the first example. Only my friend plays cricket. What does this mean? This means that my friend is the only one that plays cricket. Here's a similar sentence. Note that the words are exactly the same, although they are placed in a different order, and so their meaning is different. My only friend plays cricket. Shame. This person only has one friend, no others. Where else can the only be placed in order to change the meaning? My friend only plays cricket. Here it means the friend doesn't watch or support cricket, he only plays it. Another place that only can go is... My friend plays only cricket. Here the meaning is that my friend only plays cricket, not soccer or rugby. This next sentence has a similar meaning, but the word order changes the emphasis. My friend plays cricket only. It means that only cricket is played, no other sport, but this time there's even more emphasis. Each of these sentences is grammatically correct, but they each have a different meaning. So you'll see from this that placing the words in a particular order can alter the meaning. Now you'll notice that the word that has been used to modify the meaning, in this case the word only, is placed as closely as possible to the word that is being modified. To explain this, here are the cricket examples again. Only my friend plays cricket. In this sentence, only is next to my friend, so that is the word it belongs to or modifies. My friend only plays cricket. In the second sentence, only is next to plays. So that is the word that only applies to. And the third sentence, my friend plays cricket only. What word does the only apply to here? You think about it at home. In the examples we've just seen, the word only applied just to the word next to it. But in some sentences, the word that alters the meaning might apply to the next few words, not just one word. Let me illustrate this to you. My mother uses only six delicious recipes. What does this mean? Does it mean that my mother uses only six recipes and they are all delicious? Or does it mean that she only has six recipes for delicious food and the other recipes are not nice? So you can see that this word order creates ambiguity because we're not sure what the only applies to. But we can fix this problem and clear up the confusion by making a few minor adjustments. Sometimes though, we have to rewrite the whole sentence. So here are two possibilities. My mother uses only six delicious recipes and only six of my mother's recipes are delicious. In each of these sentences, the meaning is now clear. In the first one, she uses only six recipes, but these are delicious. 
In the second sentence, the speaker is making his feelings clear about her recipes. Here's another example of ambiguous word order, where we're unsure which word or words the adjective applies to. We were served iced lemonade and tea to drink. The problem here is the word iced. You cannot be sure whether it applies just to the lemonade or to the lemonade and tea. This sentence is ambiguous because we don't know what kind of tea is being served. You can get hot tea, but you can also get iced tea. How can we clear up this confusion? We'll change the word order. And instead, we'll have, we were served tea and iced lemonade to drink. That solves the problem. By swapping the order around, it is quite clear that the adjective iced now only applies to the lemonade and not to the tea. But what if it was a summer party and iced tea was served? How could we change the sentence then? Well, we can add the word iced to tea to make the sentence, we were served iced tea and iced lemonade to drink. Now the problem has been solved by repeating the adjective iced once for tea and again for lemonade. This example shows you that you must make sure that the adjective applies to the word that you intended and if necessary you may have to rewrite the sentence. Remember this. Make sure that the adjective applies to the noun that you intended. Another word order problem that often occurs is when you try to shorten a sentence. But by leaving out some words, ambiguity is created. Let me show you an example. She likes me more than she likes you. Now you might shorten this to She likes me more than you. But this is a mistake. Look carefully at what this sentence means. Well, in addition to meaning the same as your original sentence, that she's fonder of me than she is of you, it could also mean that she likes me more than you do. This sentence has now become ambiguous. So you cannot shorten it in this way. For it to make sense, you would have to leave it in its original form or change the sentence by adding another word and make it read, she likes me more than you do. Okay, here's another example. It's also an ambiguous sentence because it has more than one meaning. Can you work out what these are? The learner walked towards the teacher intending to shout at him. The problem with this sentence is that you don't know who is intending to do the shouting. Let's take another look. Either the learner or the teacher is intending to shout. It's far more likely that it's the teacher who's intending to shout, but the meaning is still unclear. By adding in a few words, we can remove the ambiguity, like this. The learner walked towards the teacher who was intending to shout at him. Remember, your writing will always make sense to you because you wrote it. But to a reader, the words can be misinterpreted and the intended meaning lost if you're not precise. So remember, it's important that you formulate your sentences carefully. If there is a possibility of your sentence being misinterpreted, reformulate it. I hope I've taught you to be on the lookout for ambiguity in sentences. You can even have fun spotting ambiguity in passages that you read. So watch out for word order 
as where you place a word can alter the meaning. That's all I have for you today. See you next time.